Hey guys, it's Mark with Hallmark Pool Supplies. Today I'm going to show you in this video how we change seals on a power flow matrix above ground pool pump by Hayward. But before we get started, I want to thank everybody for watching. And if you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button for future content. And for those of you that want to support the channel and you've hit that thanks button on any of my videos, I definitely appreciate it. It does go towards the video production of this channel. So let's dive in and change seals on the power flow matrix. So the first thing we want to do before we start changing seals is we want to make sure we turn the pump off and then you want to get a plug and you want to plug your skimmer and put your multiport valve on closed. Now, if you guys don't have a plug, we can simply disconnect the hose in front of the pump and hook it to the return. So what we're doing in a sense is bridging the skimmer and the return, separating the system so that this way we can work on the pump without getting wet. The next step, will be to take the pump lid off. And we just wanna take the lid off. We're gonna remove the basket. And then if we look down inside here, you'll see a retainer clip. We've gotta grab this retainer clip and lift up. And by lifting up, there's your retainer clip. We can remove the housing. Now we've got the housing removed and now we've gotta come in here and take the screws off. And what we're gonna do we're going to come in here and we're just going to loosen this. Now that we got the screws out, we'll set those to the side and we can take this piece off. And it is important to note that there is an O-ring here as well as an O-ring on the back side. So we want to make sure that we don't uh, damage that and make sure that it's good. And we'll set that to the side. Now we've got to get the impeller off so that we can get to the seal so we can change the seal. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a quarter inch nut driver I'm going to remove the back, set that to the side. And if we'll note, we have a slot here where a screwdriver will fit. We're going to take our flathead screwdriver. We're going to stick it here so that this way we can lock it in. We're going to go to the front of the pump. Okay, now we're going to just grab the impeller. We're going to turn it off. And then she'll unscrew. We've got the impeller off. And then we've got the seal on the impeller. And then, of course, we've got the inner seal, which is right here. Now, some people like to take a, a small flathead screwdriver and poke or pull this out. And you can. However, the proper way to do it so we don't damage anything in here would be get a quarter inch nut driver. And if you'll note, there's four screws. One, two, three, four on the outside edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew. And as we unscrew, you can see the screw starting to back out, but we're not going to take them out. We're going to leave them in and I'll explain. And by unloosening these, this will eventually pop off like so. And then I'm going to push these screws back in and make sure they stay in. And the reasoning for this is they're sticking out right here. And if we pull this out, it's very difficult getting that screw to line up because you're going from here all the way to here to get it back in. So I like to just keep these like that so they don't uh, do that. In the process of trying to take this off, if you guys have a nut driver here and you start trying to turn this and it does not want to turn, I have seen these get rusted in to the grommet. And if that happens, you can actually shear this off and break it. And if that happens, We've got a whole nother problem. So if you get to a point where this is not wanting to come off and you can't release this, then I would recommend so you don't break the bolt to uh, take this out with a screwdriver and we're just going to pry it out. And that's another way you can do it. But now that we got this off, I can take my nut driver here, just tap that and remove that inner seal that was there. So we've got that part of the seal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the seal off the impeller. So as I remove the seal, I'm going to take that part of the seal off. And now that that's off, we see that this is nice and clean. We want to inspect it, make sure nothing's damaged. Everything looks good, no cracks. And at this point in time, put our old seals over here, throw those away. And we'll get the new seals. And when you get us to the seals for the power flow, this is what we have. We've got the actual seal. And then the actual other part of the seal for the impeller. And then you get this 
and this we will discard. This is pertaining to the old power flows prior to the matrix. They were using these. We won't need that today because as you saw when we took it off, this is all that we needed. So at this point in time, I will get some jack lube. And we'll go around the jacket here, making sure that this is on really good. We'll set that down in place, push it in. You see she's nice and tight. Good fit on the inside there. We've got that seal on. And then we're going to take a little bit more lube. We're going to go around the shaft of the impeller. And then we can take the seal. And the seal, actually there's two sides to the seal. There's the metal seal. And then you got the uh, Teflon side of the seal. We want to make sure we put the metal to the impeller. So we're going to take this, set it here. And it should slide on nice and easy. We've already lubed it. You see that that's good. That's on nice and tight. Now we're going to be able to start putting our pump back together. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our piece here that we just put the inner seal in. We're going to line this back up, get our quarter inch nut driver, and put our screws back in. And now that we've got this on, we've got our seal in here, take our impeller, we're going to be able to screw it on. We'll just get it started. And then what I like to do is we'll just get our flathead screwdriver here. We've got to hold this again to keep this from turning so that we can actually screw this on. And as you can see now, we've got that tight and now we can go ahead and proceed to put this back on. Once again, we've already checked this O-ring, everything looks good. And if you guys would like at this time, we can take a little bit of lube, we can go around and we can lubricate the O-rings. It does help and adds life to the O-ring. we we'll do the same with the outside one. So that looks good. And then we're gonna put this piece on. And now when we put this piece on, you have one side here that's different from all the others. And this is so that we can line this up so we can put this in and it goes just like so. And you can see here that it goes in a groove that's not notched out. I just wanna tap that on, get that in place, nice and smooth. And then we can grab our screws. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our drill and we're gonna snug these up. I'm not gonna torque it down because I don't wanna strip anything because we are going from plastic to plastic. But this way we can go ahead and just get it started going across from one another, making sure we draw it in evenly. Now that we've got that on pretty snug, then what I'd like to do is take a handheld screwdriver so we don't strip it. And we're just gonna go around each one and just snug them up, make sure they're good and tight. And now that's good and tight all the way around. We can put our back cap back on, get our quarter inch nut driver, just snug that up hand tight. And then we're gonna be ready to put our housing on. We also wanna inspect and check this, make sure it's clean, there's no trash in here because remember the O-ring here is going to seat inside of this here. So we just want to make sure all this is good. Everything looks good. We can go ahead and put this back on, get that set in place. And then we're going to take our retainer clip that we took off earlier and set it on and just push it down. And she pops right in. That kind of just locks it in place. And we can put our basket in, get our lid put back on. So she's nice and tight. And then you guys are going to be ready to go. Now, what we have to do once this is all done, remove the plug, take the handle off the closed position, put it back in filter. And remember, if you guys didn't have a plug and we just bridged the hose from the skimmer to the return, we'll have to take the hose off the return, put it back on the pump, hook up the return. You wanna put a little bit of water in the pump, turn it on, and then you guys are good to go. So that wraps it up. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. If you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to comment down below or contact me. I'll be glad to help. I will post links for parts to this pump down below. So if you guys need any parts, you can check that out. Definitely remember us on Hallmark Pool Supplies. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And definitely for those of you hitting that thanks button, I'd really do appreciate it. My name is Mark and I'll see you guys on the next video.